right, we might as well get started. Uh, welcome everyone to another ACF Chat Fridays. This is our bi-weekly office hours with the ACF team. We've got a number of the ACF engineers here um, and we've got Damon Cook from DevRel as well, which is great. We've got Brian from the engineering team. So we've got a whole bunch of us coming here every other week just to talk ACF and to take questions, to talk about topics um, and, and generally help you out uh, if you need it. We do record these sessions and we put them on YouTube and we'll put a blog post on the ACF website um, so you can always catch up if you need to. Uh, what else have we got? We have, I guess, let's just my usual rundown of ACF news. Since we last did a Chat Fridays, we have been crowned, or ACF has been crowned, the winner of the Talk Mags Plugin Madness competition for the second year in a row, which is very nice. So if you have, if you did vote in that, we appreciate the support. Thank you for that. That's great. Um, what else are we doing? Uh, we are still working very, very hard on the last part of WordPress 6.3. Uh, WordPress 6.3? We're not working on WordPress. We're working on ACF 6.3. Uh, and the beta, the first beta release that we'd hope to have out this week has been postponed until next week. So if you're uh, if you're inclined to test beta releases and you want to help us um, give it some battle testing, especially around using ACF blocks, you can sign up to the uh, the beta news list email via that link, and you'll hear when we when we make the the beta available to download. Uh, what else have we done? Oh, we you might have seen if you've gone to the ACF website recently, but we've given it a slight refresh in how it looks. So, uh, it, well, the, the ACF website had been looking very similar for a long time. Uh, and a common complaint really was the accessibility of the background color on some of the hero sections, the, the sort of the very minty green, um, which incidentally, Liam, did you find out that it was a weird Easter egg of the hexadecimal color, color code for ACF, ACF, or something very like that? Yeah, I think it was that. And then because that wasn't accessible on white, it was changed slightly, which kind of ruined it. But it was close enough to ACF, ACF, but I'm sticking with that as the law there. Yeah, that's why it was it was that green. But that has been updated, so it's a lot more accessible uh, to try and read colour on that on that background, which is now much darker and just looks a bit more modern. So we, we've given it a, a fresh lick of paint rather than a complete overall sort of design overhaul. Um, but yeah, that's I thought that was just worth sharing. Um, we, yeah, I think that's about it. I think we, we were gonna, we're happy to take questions in the Q and A, um, but today we've got Damon from DevRel, as I said, and he's gonna do a uh, a demo of ACF support for the block bindings API that was released in WordPress 6.5. Uh, and we released ACF 6. Point, did I just say ACF 6.5 or WordPress 6.5? Anyway, block bindings API came in WordPress 6.5 and we released support for it in ACF 6.2.8, uh, which was I think was released on the same day. So we're going to talk through that. Damon's going to do a demo, but please use the Q&A feature, which I seem to have now lost in the Zoom. Oh, there it is, under more. Yeah, feel free to drop questions in the chat or the Q&A. Uh, and then once, I guess, Damon's finished his demo, you can always unmute and ask questions because there's a small group of us. So thanks for coming, Damon. I'll hand it over to you. You're muted, I'm muted. Now can you hear me? Sorry about that. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, man. Can you see my screen okay, though? Yeah, screen's all good. And you are appearing down the bottom left, which is very cool. Cool. Hopefully I'm not blocking anything. <laughs> Just trying out the new Zoom, yeah, so I can have my head floating. Um, yeah, uh, all right, block bindings, pretty exciting stuff. Um, came out in WordPress 6.5, uh, which dropped, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I know the ACF team uh, worked hard to get integration um, out of the box. So even, uh, what, do, what are we running? 6.2.8 here um, has block binding support out of the box for ACF. Um, and 
just a little kind of high level stuff. Um, block bindings is kind of, I think it'll, it'll, it'll become clear as I dive into some uh, demonstrations, but it's a means of tying dynamic data to existing blocks and their attributes. And once you bind it, it's uh, part of the final uh, output or the final markup. Um, I highly, there's some really good resources and, you know, I, I've read through a lot of them. So I think, you know, I'll drop some of these, uh, links in the chat as I get to it, but if somebody beats me to it, <laughs> go for it. Um, but yeah, this is a, a great post from Justin Tadlock introducing, uh, block bindings on developer wordpress.org. Um, and I think this starts to kind of demonstrate this is kind of typical uh, block markup language. And once you start uh, introducing like block bindings, you can uh, register these custom attributes. Or, I'm sorry, these are, yeah, we're actually binding these attributes to blocks. So let me actually dive into some code and I think it'll become hopefully clear because it is a, a little bit of a abstract thing. So. I have a basic site, WordPress core, um, and ACF Pro running. Let's see, just give a little overview. Yeah, ACF Pro 6.2.9. And then I created a child theme of 2024, just so um, I can put my functionality in there. And I've created a field group called call to action, and it's just four fields, heading, copy, button URL, and image. And um, I have this just assigned to the post, post type, just for this demonstration. So let's create a new post. And I'm gonna use lots of lorem ipsum in here, just to keep things moving. And I'm going to fill out these meta fields with our information. And let's see. And just attach an image. And we'll hit publish just to save our work. But nothing, nothing to do, nothing to see there. Let's open it up just to show what's going on. Yep, nothing nothing really to see there. But in the if we go go over here to ACF's documentation for 6.2.8, um we can copy over and this just starts to show how the bindings work. Um but there is no kind of UI to directly and edit these block bindings yet. Um, probably in the next release or two, they'll start to surface some of that. But you actually have to go into the code editor over here and drop this in. And we're doing a paragraph block right now. But we the key things here are the source is an ACF field. And then the key we're going to use for this one, we're going to say, we're just going to target copy. So I'll put copy here. And if we exit, it says the value of this paragraph comes from the block bindings and will be, be replaced. So this block is now bound to this copy. And it doesn't really show anything in the editor, but it shows this purple uh, icon to show that it's bound. So if we save that and hop back over to our preview, we start to see there's the value of the ACF uh, field for copy. Which is, yeah, that's it's pretty neat. Um, so what can we do to get all of this information possibly in here? Um, there are a few different ways to do this. Um, I think the easiest way is to look at registering custom block variations. Um, so again, I'm in the 2024 child theme and this is the functions.php. And I'm just going to jump down to the bottom here where the filter is. Um, we're using the get block type variations um, and we're registering some custom block variations. And block, block variations, it can be confusing because um, 
block variations and block styles. Uh, block variations allow you to basically assign uh, custom attributes to existing blocks. So when you go to insert them, the attributes are, are automatically uh, assigned to that block. Whereas kind of a block styles is more of a, kind of assigning a class to a block. Um, so if we hop back up to the top here, I have four variations registered, a heading. And again, this is where we start to hook into, we're hooking into cores heading block and saying metadata bindings. And then we're using the ACF field and we're targeting the key for the heading. And so you'll see where this is going. I'm just tying in copy for paragraph. And then we have buttons and then we have inner blocks here because the buttons has nested inner blocks. And then we have a button with a single button and we're using the button URL, ACF field and image. So with those registered, we can hop back over to our site and I'm just going to actually take this out of here and we can start doing, let's see, I'm actually going to go group, just going to put these in a group block and switch it to transform and put it in actually some columns. And then we can say CTA and our heading shows up here. So this is our custom variation of the heading. And then we can say after that, we'll add and CTA copy. And then we'll add our buttons. And then over in the other column, we'll just add an image. And I think we're all set. We update that and save. Voila, this is all the information that's coming from our ACF fields, we have the link on the button, the copy, title, image URL. Um, and also, I'll also uh, provide a, I have a gist that I can provide a link to at the end. So you have uh, kind of the markup here, but that is the general idea. This is kind of the stuff you see in the editor is these purple, because all this uh, data is dynamic. So it's being replaced. Um, Another way to kind of take this and abstract it a little further even is to create a pattern for this. So I'm actually gonna just do some light styling real quick. Uh, we'll say border radius nine and add some padding. And we're gonna make this a little wide and set our columns wide as well. Okay, make sure everything's working here. All right, yep. And the, oh, actually, let's just one last thing. Let's center these. Okay, so we can take this and save it as a pattern. Um, and actually before, I, I mean, I can, I already did that, so I'll skip this step, but we can take this out, this whole thing, uh, an update, and then I'll just hop over here. Let's see. I have a, in my patterns, I have a call to action. So this is just essentially, you know, I just took 2024, took one of their patterns, copied it over, and then just replaced the block uh, markup language here with basically what I just created. So then we can come over here and just say, add patterns. And it's categorized under call to action. Um, well, sorry, I created that one earlier. That's a custom one, but this is the one that's registered from the theme. So we can just insert that there and update, and we still have the same result. So those are just kind of taking the bindings and binding them and then just kind of abstracting them into different ways that you might surface that for users. Um, with that being said, you can also uh, use attributes uh, alongside it to, to assign them to core blocks, but then also you could register ACF blocks and kind of pull it all together that way as well. Um, I didn't have time to, to create that, uh, that, that level, but um, that's another means of doing it. So 
I'm not sure if we have any questions at this point, but I'm going to grab some links um, and drop them in the if they're not already in the this chat. Thanks, Damon. That was really good. Oh, we've got Brian's got a hand up. Go for it, Brian. So um, in, in a sense, this is replacing the need to build ACF blocks for these specific, uh, you know, normally I'd build an ACF block for each of these different um, uh, ACF um, fields to then design and populate in the uh, page or template as I wanted. So this is, in a sense, it's kind of replacing that for some of some of these uses. Uh, I guess yes and no, because the way the block bindings work, it's connecting meta to blocks, but that meta is stored on the page or post mm -hmm. rather than the difference with ACF blocks, that the meta is stored for, for that block. So your, your, your editor is creating the data whilst cre adding the block, and then that data stores is stored purely for that block rather than this might this might be quite handy for just displaying global uh because i think i can't remember liam correct me if i'm wrong if we've got options page support for v1 of our api but you can you obviously connect that global post meta to any block on the page but custom blocks are still a bit more specific and a bit more granular okay gotcha then Yeah, I think uh, I don't think block bindings currently has support for like site options and user uh, info, but that's on the roadmap. Um, and I know uh, I'm pretty sure Liam, you, you, the team is already, you know, once that's rolled out in core, I'm sure that's something ACF will leverage to surface all that information as well. So. Good question. Yeah, I think this is to, to us. This is this is not necessarily the replacement for a custom block or creating a custom block. It's just the way to surface post or page meta in the block editor. Whereas right now you can't do that, or you know, pre six five you couldn't do that. You'd have to install a a plugin that was like a custom block display meta as block or something like that which just gave you the ability to take any piece of post meta from that from that post and and add it in the block in the block editor or you'd have to use the acf shortcode in a block to then you know render that value as a para, as the content of a paragraph or something like that but it, but it, it the connection wasn't so great so block binding is is a good step forward for wordpress and acf but as a, a pairing for acf blocks depending on how you're building your site depending on where you want the data to live, depending on how you want your client to edit that data, um, that they're, they're kind of they they um, what's the word? They complement each other rather than replace one another. Okay, gotcha. Because now, if I'm building something like a template in the full site editor with um, ACF blocks, unless I dictate like in the uh, in in the code for the block to have like dummy copy or uh, lorem ipsum um to output like i i basically am seeing kind of nothing while i'm building and then have to wait till i look at the uh the front end to like so so yeah so it's kind of not WYSIWYG as it is currently built but i can see how this block bindings kind of i guess solves that problem yeah, I mean, you touched on something there that I wonder if that if that's another problem that we could help to solve with creating an ACF block with some default data in it, rather than having it so sort of empty and blank, and then you don't see any change until you go and add that data. Yeah, you can already set uh, in your block.json, you can set an example. Um, and if you pass in, that is essentially a, a, a set of default attribute data that gets submitted when you first add the block so if you set um if you set the data on that it would give you kind of that preview view showing what data is when you whenever it generates those little previews that you see um, and then obviously you can do stuff uh your side uh in the the template as well um, and we've, we're working on some stuff for six four to kind of try and make this you know we've talked a lot about how our improvements to blocks and the kind of 
the plan for that is coming together now. So you can expect to see some more things on that road in six four and onwards. And and since you're like uh um since you you you're building a block variation, you can actually target that block variation with CSS pretty easily. So what what I what I do in that situation is because like that 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 default text that displays is not a great representation of what's what content is going to be rendered. What you can do is with CSS, just literally statically define the height and width of whatever you expect that element to take up and then put something inside of there. And that way, like it renders at least somewhat similar to the front end. Yeah, and Liam, as you said, you can do that in the PHP template as well, can't you? You could just say, if there's no field data, do this or show this and yeah, make it. Well, you appear. can use a default values in your uh, in your actual fields as well. Yeah, uh, it, that what you just said about using the example is it an example attribute in the block.json? Yeah, like, that'd be good to. I don't recall we've got specific documentation on that, even though yes, it's a core thing. But it would be quite handy to have that as a example for ACF block crit users. Yeah, um, just the one thing I sorry I had this uh, while I had it pulled up. Yeah, I think I just want to call out that currently in WordPress six point five, these are the attributes that are supported in the core in the core blocks that um, support them. So that could be seen as a limitation in a way. Um, I'm sure, again, I think these are going to be rolled out to more blocks going forward in future releases, but I just wanted to highlight that as well because I think it's a good call out that these are the attributes here and, uh, yeah, these are the blocks over in this column. Yeah, you can get pretty far with that, what what you've got there. But, yeah, it's good to see WordPress are going to be building on that. Yeah, I just wanted to pull up uh, the example. So in block.json, like, yeah, you can target some of this stuff. Um, so to pre-populate the, the editor view, I guess, as Liam was saying. Well, hope that helps, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, that, that helps. I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm a designer who I like to tinker with development. So some of these concepts, you know, take me a little longer to, to wrap my head around, but I appreciate kind of showing the ropes a little bit here. Yeah, do you know what? I feel exactly the same, uh, and I, I'm barely tinkering with anything at the moment. But there's so many term, so many terms and terminology in the WordPress block editor system that I'm, I get so confused with stuff. And I had a different um, understanding of what block variations was because I hadn't really used them in Angular at all. And then seeing Damon use it, that's really clicked for me what a block variation is and why you'd use it. Um, so there's just yeah. This is a whole new system to learn, really, and to lots of terms. Any other burning questions? Uh, yeah, feel free to unmute or stick in the chat. Yeah, sorry, I missed the beginning of the chat. I was just wondering if you've got any plans to kind of make the ACF block fields a little bit more native feeling moving forward. At, at the minute, we kind of build custom sites for people. We're still on classic editor predominantly because we like to you know, lock down and have a maintainable site and the design is very much kind of branded and kind of scoped and specified. So we haven't really moved fully to Gutenberg and don't really have a desire to learn React either. Kind of yeah, the, ideal yeah. situation for us would be a kind of ACF field builder, but with a bit more of a kind of native or more heavily kind of Gutenberg feel to it. So it's not so, it just feels a little bit jarring when you get the kind of native blocks next to the ACF blocks and kind of switching between editing in the sidebar versus the actual editor itself. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, we actually, we spoke a lot about this towards the end of last year as we started kind of figuring out how to solve that problem. Um, uh, someone in chat can hopefully post the link to the write-up from the ACF Chat Fridays that we did for that one. Um, 
essentially our plan is yeah absolutely we want to make everything native and it you know it's pretty clear that we're going to have to make react components to everything it's taking us a long while to kind of get the foundation in place and, and kind of figure out what that looks like and how we're going to do that because obviously we need to do it in a back compatible way but i think we're there now i think we understand you know the road to get there it kind of as i said earlier it starts in in six four because we're going to ship a, a, essentially a rewrite of acf blocks in a much more modern you know kind of setup and everything like that that's going to make it much easier for us to develop uh, and build on things faster because we're kind of getting hamstrung a little bit by by the way everything's set up right now um so yeah six four is going to have that rewrite of blocks there won't be too much new functionality we're planning a few things in there i don't know if Ian wants to share those i'll let him do that if he wants to um uh, and then we'll kind of quickly iterate on that part of that is figuring out a way for fields to be able to give us a react component version of themselves because obviously we can do that for all of our core fields but we want to maintain compatibility for third-party fields and give them a way to do that because we're in that world of of everything is currently jquery right and, and that's always going to be a problem and we need to we'll move away from that in core our side once we've got to a point where we can give you the same apis that you're used to for js apis and, and all that kind of stuff that people use now so essentially i see that as fields will sort of opt in to say hey i'm ready here's a react version and we'll use that where we can we're gonna we've got some css tweaks and plans to try and make everything else feel more native even if it's still just using legacy jquery so yeah a long road i think to get there yeah it's, it's certainly not a, a short-term thing to solve this but yeah I, we're definitely it's, the roadmap is, is figured out on, on how we get there so give it give us a give us a year or so and i, I imagine this time next year everything will look definitely different than it does now as a, a long-term well user and lifetime licensee of acf i would not be adverse to you spinning that out as another plugin and paying for another license for that at all i've had so much value uh, of acf on certainly on a lifetime license if you made you know advanced custom blocks and that was a whole kind of separate separate entity separate product then i uh, wouldn't be adverse to that at all it's obviously a massive undertaking to get it get it in place. Certainly, is Gutenberg yeah. has changed a lot and kind of continues to keep changing. Yeah, if you, yeah. If you look exactly. at the WordPress plans for the the new admin screens and all that kind of stuff, they're all going to be based in React anyway. So we kind of feel like our end, yeah. Eventually, everything modern in WordPress will be in React, and it'll just be the way it is. So we kind of have to go down that road in the core plugin anyway. So it's kind of a let's get a head start here try and work alongside WordPress and, and, you know, adopt the new things as they build them whilst also knowing we've got a significant foundation and, you know, we're not going to leave classic users behind. We're going to make sure everything still works there. Um, I think one of, the, one of the things we need to solve is, is like WYSIWYG fields. It's a, it's a common challenge. I don't know if you use WYSIWYG fields in the ACF blocks right now, but that can be, uh, that can be painful and every WordPress release seems to make it worse because, you know, they ship tiny MCE. We don't have control over that trying to use it in the block editor, random things are now inter interfering and interrupting and modules are not appearing like they're supposed to. And we're kind of, kind of having to figure out a, a way forward on that. We're, we're telling people to use inner blocks, but obviously if you've got back compact code, it's not necessarily as easy as just uh, swapping over to that. So yeah, there's definitely challenges along the way, but uh, yeah, I think we're uh, we kind of got our ducks in a row on, on how we're going to solve this now. Yeah, and, and we obviously appreciate your support as well. and. Like the the lifetime licenses are are not changing, obviously, and we are we don't have any plans to do anything different with you know ACF blocks is a feature of ACF Pro, which is continues to be sold as a subscription. Um so yeah, we you know, we appreciate all of our users and lifetime users are those lifetime ones because they've been around forever and they've always supported ACF. So yeah, we appreciate that. Good work, guys. Good to, good to hear it's kind of on the roadmap and something you're considering. Yeah, and, and we definitely yeah. want to uh, address the editing experience, you know, over the long term around the sidebar editing, switching the preview mode into an edit form, which is not a native experience. And we want to try to move towards something that is more native with regards to editing. Uh, and something that we probably will try and tackle in the short term is just the ability to edit simple text paragraphs and headings or you know text fields or text area fields 
in the preview block, sorry, in the preview mode of the block rather than switching it to the edit form. So your clients and your editors can can just click into a paragraph of a text area field and just change it there without making it turn into a text area input. Uh, it just feels yeah. a bit icky. So it becomes more, we want to be more WYSIWYG and more native to, to the block editor experience. So yeah, that is something that we will try and do medium term. Yeah, and that's missing something either, but you can't kind of compile a block out of the Gutenberg components as it stands, just with kind of defining them in a JSON or something. You have to make it as a React component. Yeah, so I mean, you can extend, right? And we could almost certainly, some of the ACF uh, fields that we ship will use those WordPress components. You know, like there's no point us building a text editor or, you know, I think they've got a nice, fairly nice, fancy select that you can load and we'll probably end up using that as a replacement for select two or well, those kind of things we'll end up using. And, you know, we might, we're more than happy to kind of use that stuff where we can and make things feel native, but we would need to wrap them in our own logic so that we can fire the events and the hooks and the filters and stuff that make ACF so good for devs. All the conditional logic stuff for hiding, yeah. showing hiding fields. Yeah. Yeah. The Ant posted the link in, in chat where we talked a bit more about kind of, the long-term goals there and, and our plan of essentially replacing all the jQuery date pickers and things like that with the WordPress component equivalents. But obviously well, that won't work uh, in the classic editor. So It's funny, really, because I never have complaints from clients that they find the classic editor or the kind of ACF flexible layouts kind of hard to update. And then at the beginning of the year, we did a couple of sites in Gutenberg and people were kind of <laughs> adverse to the change. So yeah, I get it. I used to work at the, the classic edit. It was the it's same there. Solving a problem that doesn't exist in a way, but it just feel a bit bad that it's all kind of moving in that direction. At some point, it's just going to be a little bit too legacy to be producing new sites with the classic editor. But, yeah, you know. I mean, it, that really does depend on what WordPress want to do with the classic editor, and that, and but I don't think they can make drastic changes soon around that. And I think you know, from our point of view. We want to still support people building in the classic way, especially when it comes to using the flexible content field, because that is a powerful and valid use case of building a way for clients to have good control, not full control, but good control over the, the content uh, and the data. So yeah, we, we're still committed to making it sure ACF supports that way of working. Um, and obviously keeping tabs of what WordPress decides to do with the classic editor and things like that. But yeah, we, but we're still trying to be, you know, as, as progressive as possible. And, and as Liam said, keep in, keep in line with what WordPress does with the core, uh, the block editor and, and make sure the ACF blocks is as, is as good as that experience. And, and similarly, like with block binding API, that's something that WordPress has added. It's great. And of course we should be compatible with it, which is why we've, we've done that. So, we're, we're trying to fight on multiple fronts um, and there's not a huge amount of us on the team, but we're, you know, doing the best we can and hoping that ACF can keep, can keep helping developers deliver good sites for their clients. Yeah. That, that, I think that's the thing, right? Like in 6.3, for example, we're shipping uh, something called uh, basically to let you create a block that stores its values directly in post meta. So in that case, you could use the block editor to kind of simulate what you would, previously doing the classic editor, right? Where you assign a field group to it, you turn off all the editor views and you literally just allow them to fill in that content. So like a location, for example, if you were doing like a, you know, a restaurant site, for example, with a, a few different locations. So the location CPT in those, in those worlds would, um, would just give you the fields that you needed to populate that data and then let you expose it in other places. So in the, in once ACF 6.3 comes out, um, and we'll have a beta of that in the next few weeks, uh, you'll be able to turn on a block to say, Hey, don't store these values in the block comment, store it in the post meta. Uh, and then you could use the custom post type template to say this, this custom post type template only allows one of this ACF block that stores its data in post meta. So you end up essentially replicating that classic editor view. Uh, well, I'll make sure we do a, a blog post on on kind of explaining that better with, with, with real world examples and code when that comes out. But that, yeah, that's a, that's a kind of an example of how we're trying to trying to help folks across 
who do want to move to the Blanca letter, whilst obviously making sure ACF Classic still works in the, in the Classic letter. Yeah, that's, yeah. Good. that's definitely something where, you know, we have quite ongoing relationships with clients. So we've kind of redesigned, migrated, added features, functions. And that's something that I'm really not clear about with Gutenberg when you've got all the content kind of wrapped up in the kind of comments in post content, you kind of how you can kind of batch process that, move yeah. it around, export it, tweak it. It's obviously, yeah, exactly. You know, ACF with meta fields is perfect for that. You can just kind of export it, reformat it. Move it about, do what you need. That makes sense. Yeah, for sure. And you obviously, a lot of the time, you don't want the clients to be able to put in an extra section on the website, right? Like, because it's not how you designed it. Certainly, the designers yeah. I used to work with would not have been a fan of allowing our clients to do that. So, uh, all the things like template locking and things like that that kind of came to WordPress, you know, there's there's some some documentation on that. I think we have some good documentation on it, but I don't think people necessarily know all of these little things that keep shipping because they're shipping so much stuff in each each major version that it just kind of becomes impossible to keep on top of whilst also doing your day job. Yeah, very true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. Sounds... I know you're welcome, Ian. Uh, but it's a common thing that we keep hearing from people that are or have historically built with the flexible content field and, you know, either want to move to the block editor um, way of working for the clients or they've had the clients ask for it so we are working on some documentation to help kind of do that migration if you want to to go from flexible content to acf blocks because that path is you know there, there is sort of parity there it's just learning the tricks and the different ways in the block editor to use like block locking stuff that liam's saying um that you can that you can then kind of give clients the same control not so much, not loads, but the same controls you have for flexible content field, but the block editor um, and the ability to use native blocks as well as custom blocks. Um, so yeah, we'll 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 try and um, expedite that doc and that all that tutorial, and you know, post it in in the next session when when it's available. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks very much. Nice. And if you're interested in the beta. Uh... Ian, have you got the link handy for to sign up for the mailing list for that? We'll pop that in yeah. chat. Please join. Uh, we're launching block validation, uh, which you might not have noticed, but if you've got required fields and things like that in blocks, ACF has always ignored them until 6.3. Um, and yeah, we've just about finished up the dev on that. Um, there's a significant amount of work and changes that have gone into that. So we're keen to, keen to get as many folks on on testing that when it releases probably next week, maybe the week after. Let's, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, we've got to see how things go. All righty. Um, well, we have got the last five minutes to go. Um, has anyone got any last moment questions? Oh, then we can start wrapping up. So I think that's been helpful. All righty. Well, um, thanks again for coming. Thank you, uh, Damon, for that really good demo. That's That's been informative, been really helpful. Um, and yeah, we will see you in a couple of weeks. We'll put this uh, post on on the on the, the website as well. So in case you, uh, in case you want to catch up with the recording of the demo. All righty. Have a good weekend, folks. See you next time. Cheers, everyone. Bye.